Here, we develop shapers of the world. Innovators, visionaries, and effective leaders. This is where we transform you. A leading university founded by a leader, established through the ideals of former President Jose P. Laurel, succeeded by the principles of Dr. Sotero H. Laurel, a university proud of its long and rich tradition of academic excellence. Here in LPU, we don't only get a chance to learn by book. Through the interactive activities provided by the administration, we get to apply learning to real-life problems through research, internship, and cultural exchange programs. I choose LPU because of the greatness of its facilities. We have actual hotels and as well as simulated hotels located in our own campus. We also have a culinary institute where we could attain real-world skills. We have advanced facilities such as mass communication studio, recording studio, and MAC laboratories. Most especially in my course, I really enjoyed it because we are learning while using modern technologies. We are learning using advanced facilities. The activities that I enjoy most here in LPU is doing extension services, going to different communities and teaching kids or students, young students, the proper dental hygiene. And that made me realize that LPU doesn't only develop us academically, but it also teaches us to become good people as well. prepare us mentally, emotionally, and physically for the career world. And also, I chose LPU because I was impressed by its performance in the national licensure exams. Choose LPU! Choose LPU! Choose LPU! Choose LPU! Choose LPU. You will never go wrong! LPU offers endless
up here is a fun place to stay. We innovate. We envision. And we are born leaders. Here in LPU. Located in the heart of Intramuros, the only university founded by a Philippine president, a Jose P. Laurel legacy dedicated to educate, to innovate, to inspire, with a student-centered environment that adapts to the changing times. Lyceum of the Philippines University is committed to serve with truth and fortitude for God and country. lives to build a better community because we care about your future take the lead choose LPU Manila
The artist. How creative are you? Be fun and exciting. Join the College of Arts and Sciences. Explore your interest in current events and be a journalist. Hone your creative craft and be a graphic artist. Ignite your integrated marketing skills and be a social media manager. Express your thoughts as a digital writer. Prepare to be a lawyer through legal management. Understand human behavior as a psychologist. You see it's so thrilling to know that you are a step closer to your dream career. Find out more in our website www.lpu.edu.ph
Good afternoon, everyone. Before anything else, we would like to remind the participants our house rules. The privacy notice of this webinar is now posted in the chat box. Also, please be informed that this webinar is being recorded for documentation purposes and may be uploaded in the official website and other social media accounts of the university. Should you have any privacy concerns, please do not hesitate to contact the organizers or send an email to privacy.manila at lpu.edu.ph. To all our viewers here on Zoom, kindly enter your name, your course or strand, and your school into the chat box for your attendance. If you get disconnected due to internet interruptions, just click the same link and the organizers will let you in once we see your name in the waiting room. To our participants, kindly change your meeting name to your school name or your organization you're affiliated to dash your full name, like LPULEX dash PIA HIBOT. Accordingly, our speaker will discuss within 45 minutes and thereafter, a 15-minute Q&A portion will follow after the speaker's presentation. We encourage everyone to participate and ask questions during the said portion. Also, kindly mute yourselves during the event, especially while the sessions are ongoing. You may unmute yourself if you wish to raise a question during the question and answer portion. In order to receive a certificate, attendees are required to stay until the end of the program and answer the evaluation form that will be posted before the closing remarks. The organizers will keep track of everyone's attendance during the program. So sit back, relax, and have fun. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. I am Pia Alger A. Kibot, your LPLX Director for Internal Affairs. And my co-host is Lila Talao, your LPLEX Assistant Secretary. And we are your hosts for today. First, we would like to greet everyone on this lovely Saturday afternoon, especially those who are watching this live stream event through LPU Manila Facebook page. And of course, our participants live here in Zoom. To start this webinar series, let us sing the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the opening prayer to be led by our very own LPLEX Director, Assistant Director for Finance, Kurt Villarca. everyone, may we put ourselves in the holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
We thank you, God Almighty, our ultimate judge, for the best evidence of your love, Jesus. May his presence inspire us to seek the truth, do justice, and promote peace. Let the rule of law and your word be our guiding star. Instill in us the sense of simplicity and sense of responsibility. Grant us wisdom to discern and always do what is just, not just what is legal. Nurture in us always your love and compassion. Protect us from harm, but more importantly, give us the courage to speak for the voiceless and the silenced. To stand for life and redemption when the powerful talk of death and retribution. To solve fairness rather than fear. To be morally right than to be technically correct. To be prompt and principled amidst delays and corruption. To care for each other even as we differ and argue. For with your guidance, we will not be afraid. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Hi, Lila. So I think Lila is having her the technical difficulties. So we'll now proceed. Is Lila already there? We will now proceed, guys. But before that, I am seeing a lot of students from the different universities and high schools. I am seeing a lot of humanities and social sciences students, ABM students, STEM students, and of course, your respective management students from different universities such as UST and respectfully, Liceo of the Philippines University, Manila. We, we welcome you guys to this webinar and we hope we, you will learn something from us, especially the humanities and social science students. Humanities and social sciences students, I am reassuring you guys, as a former U student, that this webinar will help you towards. And if you want to really pursue law in the future, this is a great starter for you guys. Now we will continue. Yes, Lila, are you there? Yes, hello, I'm here. Kumusta, Laila? Napakabilis talaga ng seconds. Napakabilis talaga ng panahon. First time na naman. Kamusta kayo, Laila? Kamusta ang module 1? Ng ating mga first year legal management students. Okay, still, I think Lila is having her technical difficulties. Now we will proceed. Good afternoon again, Lexmates. It has been months since we last conducted our thesis, it, a webinar on legal research and thesis writing as a part of Lex Pasinaya series. Fortunately, technology has been serving as our safety net for us to continue learning and socializing with other people, even we're just here at the comfort of our homes. To cope with the new normal, LPU Lex decided to employ mechanisms and maximize its resources and platforms. And yes, we came up with the idea in, to implementing a project which will benefit its members and other stakeholders while performing its duties and upholding the rights of the students and empowering them to learn even in trying times. Thus, we are now officially welcoming you to I Rest My Case, a Lex webinar on reading and digesting cases. Brought to you by LPO Lex, the official college-based organization for legal management students in LPU Manila. In partnership with the Department of Legal Management and Social Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences, and Lyceum of the Philippines University, Manila. But Tia, before we proceed, may we call on our very own LPLX president to tell us more about this Lex Pasinaya series, none other than the one and only Miss Nicole Santiago. Thank you, Laila. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? 
Hello, rinig ba ako? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I wish to thank all the officers of LPULEX for spearheading this kind of webinar. The Department of Legal Management and Social Sciences and College of Arts and Sciences and of course, Lyceum of the Philippines University Manila for making this event possible. Actually, I am very happy that the legal management are continuously taking steps further to allow us to appreciate learning together while we are in pandemic and at the same time to pursue deeper knowledge in the legal field. LPLEX being the official college-based organization of legal management students in LPU Manila aims to develop its members and other stakeholders to, own, to not only being intellectually competent but also socially mindful with your regard for the rights and welfare of all community members. With the upcoming May 9, 2022 local and national elections, opinions and information is accessible to everyone in the social media platform. However, the information is most of the time incomplete, misleading, vague, irrelevant, and a product of fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. We often see on our Facebook accounts questions and statements like this. What is this case all about? Paano ba simulan, basahin, at intindihin ang mga kasong to? Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng ruling ng kasong to? Is this case final and executory? Hindi pa, totoo bang hindi final ang ruling ng essay kasi pwede pang i-apila sa Court of Appeals? Questions and statements like that. Thus, information and media literacy or fact-checking are crucial, especially that there are jurisprudence or cases decided by our courts and statutes involved here. Indeed, it is the duty of the organization to develop and empower its members with competence and capability regarding on the necessary skills needed for the development of our society. So we initiated this project called Lex Pasinaya Series, which provides accessible learning platform for students like us, while ensuring that we learn and acquire competencies effectively. This is through webinars which delve into discussing a glimpse to different law subjects and preparation to law school and legal management. At first, it was supposed to be a one-part webinar, but due to the insistent demand from different stakeholders, such as high school students, both junior and senior high school students, and researchers, professors, law students, uh, it became a series of webinars where we had invited distinguished law professors who talked about obligations and contracts, corporate law, criminal law, presence and family relations law, legal research, and thesis writing from the past few months. So what we have for today, in, in courses like legal management, aside from the tasks of memorizing codal provisions, grasping legal concepts, and reading the annotations of legal luminaries, we are often than not required to read a lot of cases and digest them. May it be handwritten or typewritten in many subjects among our other tasks. Case digest have been described as an important requirement in our course or even in other PILO courses to gain a better knowledge of the major cases that explain a variety of concepts, principles, and doctrines that our legal system has accepted. However, the reading and digesting cases is not for everyone. Most students struggle to finish reading them, what more to make a written digest? Not only because certain cases are lengthy, which may range from 50 to 100 pages per case, but also because comprehending them is a unique challenge. Thus, for this episode, we will be having a mini webinar where our speaker will be talking about tips and techniques on how to read and digest cases effectively, a skill which is a basic foundation to comprehending and acing law subjects. Regardless, if you're a high school student, professor, employee, college student, this mini webinar will be beneficial for everyone. More importantly, if you are an aspiring and current legal management or law student who were not able to experience face-to-face -face classes and were not guided firsthand by their law professors on how to handle the pressure and academic their workload effectively, this webinar will be perfect for you. We would like students to improve their reading speed, retention, and comprehension, as well as digesting cases efficiently. So I hope this project, especially our episode for today, will be able to help you in your classes and other endeavors. This is your LPO Lex President, Nicole Santiago. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you for that wonderful refresher, our very own LPO Lex President, Ate Nicole Santiago. Actually, while we are reviewing the registrants, 
we are seeing familiar names from the different universities and high school high schools which also participated last November 27. Laila, I think this is a great sign for us to host more webinars in the upcoming months as they seem to enjoy our series of lectures. Anyways, if you guys have some recommendation, you can type in it later in our evaluation form. Going back for today's webinar, we will be hearing from our top caliber speaker, and I'm very sure you're very familiar with her. Again, if you have any questions, be sure to comment it below on our Facebook Live, or you can send it directly through the chat box here on Zoom. And I hope you don't miss this chance. You know what, Pia? I am so excited to hear from our speaker, especially since we're also required to read a lot of cases, as well as digesting them in most of our law subjects. But before anything else, let us hear from the chairperson of the Department of Legal Management and Social Sciences, none other than our very own Mr. Christian Eligius A. Jimenez for his opening and welcoming remarks. Hello and good day. Welcome to our webinar entitled, I Rest My Case, another LPU Lex webinar on reading and digesting cases. Today more than ever, pursuit of justice and equity is important in pursuing global relations and a peaceful nation. The rule of law must continuously be respected and the people's right protected. Jurisprudence by virtue of the new civil code provides that judicial decisions applying or interpreting the laws or the constitution shall form part of the legal system of the Philippines. And as part of the LPU legal management family, we are all invited to go back to the basics of reading and digesting these decisions by the court and to understand how they help mold the foundation for a better legal system here in the Philippines. So we thank our speaker for today and welcome our guests, including our administrators, officers, faculty members, and students to another Lex Pasinaya series that will surely be packed with fun, fortitude, and fulfillment towards our common goal. A better citizen for a better Philippines by contributing to a better, discussions of our laws and our legal system as inspired by Jose P. Laurel's Veritas et Fortitudo Prodeo et Patria. So again, welcome and may you all have a great afternoon. Thank you for that exceptional opening remark, Sir Chris. And I bet everyone right now cannot wait to get the ball rolling. So to orient you for the program's flow, we will be having 45-minute talk from our speaker and a 15-minute Q&A &A portion after the segments. So please, if you have questions, you can send them to the organizer and or commenting via Facebook Live or in our chat box here in Zoom. And in return of your participation for today's event, we will be providing certificates in the condition that you will answer the evaluation form later and stay until the end of this webinar. So, Pia, before anything else, gusto ko lang kamustahin, ano nga ba experiences mo bilang second year na as a legal management student in writing and digesting cases? As a student, as, as a part of the entire community of the, of the student, as, as a part of the entire community of those students who became so overwhelmed with the online setups and the hundreds of cases that we need to digest. Naging mahirap siya for me na magbasa ng biglaang ganun hundreds of cases na ibababa sa'yo, isahan tapos ina-digest mo siya within a week. Sobra niya talagang hirap. Actually, iniyakan ko siya on the first part ng taxation and I guess Lila mararanasan niyo na siya in the next coming months. So, yeah, ayun nga, mararanasan din namin. Actually, some of my classmates have already experienced it sa una naming law subject, but fortunately, hindi ko pa siya nararanasan. So, bagiging new experience ko rin siya. So, nakakakaba talaga kasi especially uh, coming into legal management na course, 
hindi mo talaga may expect na kung paano yung approach ng mga magiging professors mo pagdating sa major subjects mo. Don't you agree, Pia? Yes, I really do agree with you, Lila. But I think these webinars are really great help for us sa ating mga um, juniors pa lang sa pagtake ng legal management students, but also not us legal management students and the humanities and social science students. But I think for the different M Kamang, ABM Kamang ng Strand mo during um, senior high school, I think if you really have the passion in the study of law, this webinar is a great starter for you. Laila? So, anong tingin mo dito sa naging webinar natin? Na to? Kasi personally, I think it's very helpful talaga. So, nung nabalitaan ko na we will be conducting this kind of webinar, uh, sobrang natuwa ako kasi, yun nga, wala pa akong experiences and hindi naman na tuturo uh, ng sobrang descriptive kung paano mag-digest ng cases. So, I think sobrang helpful talaga nitong webinar na to. Yes, Laila, I agree. And just to share also, um, we would I would like to say thank you to our LPU Lex President, Ate Nicole, for really pushing na matupad itong series ng webinars na to kasi para sa atin talaga tong mga juniors ng legal management students. But for now, we will call our Assistant Director for Finance, Bert Bellyarka, to share his experience also in digesting cases. Kurt, are you there? There we go. Yes, hello po fellow LexMates. So sa experience ko naman bilang first year legal management, ay talagang dito pala ako makaka-experience ng late night readings. Tipong 3 a.m. inaabutan ka na ng manok, ay hindi ka pa rin tapos. Pero yun, medyo na may bago rin ako ng una dahil for um, upcoming incoming AP legal management, ang magiging prof niya talaga ay mga seasoned attorneys from different government positions or government agencies, which is a very big change kasi for us, yung naging schedule namin, ano, um, 6 to 8, mga gabi na. Right, Laila? Tama. Ayun. Medyo nag-adjusting kami kasi nga yung volume ng readings, hindi siya same from SHS, EBM to LEGMA. But for me, I can say na natapos ang person, buhay pa naman at yun ang mahalaga. Na-enjoy pa ang legma at buhay na buhay ang pagbabasa para sa tatas. Yan. Thank you, fellow LexMate Ate Pia. Thank you very much, Kurt. Now, uusad tayo sa mga seniors na mga uh, batak na batak na sa pagdadigest ng cases. Now, we will call, call our, our very own, our very beautiful LP Lex President Ate Nicole Santiago to share her her experience also in digesting cases. Ate Nicole? I would let everyone um, to share as third year legal management student. I'm still thankful na dito ako nag-take ng EG legal management sa Lyceum. Yun, as said by Kurt, super gagaling ng mga professors, may, may fiscal, mayroong mga corporate lawyers, may mga nagkatrabaho sa government, and may mga nagkatrabaho din sa law firm. And well, super na-develop yung skills namin to read cases. And we want also to share that with you through our guest speaker for today, who is a bar top notcher during the 2019 bar exams. So sa experience naman namin as seniors or the third year students, nung first year, medyo nakakagulat siya. Since especially if hindi ka yung student before and hindi ka nakapag nakagana sa magbasa ng cases before, nakakagulat talaga siya. Since for example, in constitutional law, there are cases na umaabot ng 500 pages and ayun, ma medyo mahaba siyang babasahin unlike sa ibang subjects na mga mga 50 to 60 pages lang yung haba na. Pero what's um good kasi about reading cases is um nagigets me yung point kung ano yung gusto nung ituro sa atin ng Supreme Court. Y alam niyo yun sa mga different social issues, may mga paglilinaw ng Supreme Court and maganda yun kasi Hindi lang siya basta pag ginamit mo yung um, as legal basis yung decision decision ng court. Hindi lang siya basta opinion kasi may bigat siya, may bearing siya. Kasi Supreme Court na yun, yung pinakamataas na court sa Pilipinas. And I'm proud na sa batch natin kahit na nasa online class lang tayo and kahit na pandemic, 
um, LPU Manila and the Department of Legal Management and Social Sciences make sure na we are learning a lot and we acquire the comp competencies in our course effectively. So ayun guys, baka sa mga senior high school students, you may want to take legal management when you become ano na, college students. Ayun, thank you. Thank you po Ate Nicole for that. Pero may follow-up question lang po ako. Kasi marami pong mga first year or incoming first year sa college na perhaps gusto nilang i-take ang legal management. Pero hindi sila ganun kahilig magbasa. So, as a third year legal management student currently, masasabi mo bang through the years, mag improve talaga ang skill mo in reading and digesting cases? Uh, for me, ano naman, it takes time. Kasi noong una, kapag nakakakita ka ng mga ban papers na ganyan kapal, nakakatrawa na siya kagad. Pero yun, habang tumatagal, pag nakakita ka na ng ganun din kapal, or mas makapal pa, parang wala na ah okay, kailangan naman tapusin yan, masasanay ka din. And nakatulong din siguro yung gusto mo din yung course mismo sa sarili mo. Gusto mo yung course and gusto mo rin siya matapos. Um, kasi may, yung passion, kumbaga, nandun siya. So, kahit na, gano'ng kadami yung ibigay ng mga professors na reading sa inyo, okay lang. Although, syempre, hindi naman natin may iwasan mga burnout. Kaya nga, nagkaroon tayo ng webinar ngayon, na reading and digesting cases para sa tips and techniques na ating bar top top nature. So while waiting for while waiting for her kasi may technical difficulties, we may also ask our participants po ayun, kung di ba may mga taga ibang universities ata dito and schools and even different courses. May nakita ko kanina accountancy, may nakita akong customs administration na kagulat. Akala ko kasi yung mga atin lang dito is like yung mga political science students, legal management students, yung students pero Ayun, buong Pilipinas may mga may mga iba't ibang universities ay nasa participants. So ayan. Laila? Thank you for that insight, Ate Nicole. Sa other legal management students dyan, na mga third year, second year, or first year, may mga gusto bang mag-share ng konting opinion nila and kung ano experiences nila in reading and digesting cases? We would love to hear from our LPO Lex Vice President, Kuya Andre, can you share your experience in reading digesting cases? Kuya Andre? Um, hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as a third year legal management student, uh, parang isa sa mga memorable na experiences ko during um, um, classes is pagka tinatawag ka ng mga uh, lawyers habang nagre-recite ka tapos hindi mo malaman kung ano yung sasagot mo dahil sa kaba, and as times goes by, feeling ko na improve naman namin siya kasi nung nag-start kami as first year students, nabigla kami sa mga um, mga bigla ang readings ganyan kasi as I've said ng mga um, iba nating officers, ganoon din yung experiences experiences nila nung first year sila. So sa akin naman ang opinion ko as a legal management student, ang important lang dito is dedicated ka and meron kang perseverance na tapusin ko ano yung mga kailangan gawin kasi maraming um, marami talagang challenges na ibibigay yung mga law professors kasi gusto nilang i-establish or ma-improve um, yung mental toughness natin. And because of that, um, parang ang gusto ko lang sabihin sa mga kapwa legal management students or mga aspiring legal management students then and eventually maging law eventually mag-proceed sa College of Law is um, mag-persevere lang and laban lang palagi. Ayun lang. Thank you. Thank you, Kuya Andre. That is right. Now, guys, so to continue our program, may we call on our very beautiful Director for External Affairs to introduce our guest speaker for today, none other than Ms. Michelle Ann Oliva. Good day, everyone. Our speaker for this afternoon is the 2019 Bar Top Notcher from Legazpi City. Before becoming a lawyer, she had acquired extensive experience in the fields of taxation, accounting, and auditing. 
Currently, she is working as a corporate and tax lawyer at Reyes Tacandong and & Company and the law professor. Moreover, she is also a human rights lawyer and a member of the National Union of People's Lawyers, a group of lawyers which render effective legal assistance to the marginalized and oppressed. As a young lawyer, she is a staunch believer in speaking truth to power to abviate the pernicious effects of tyranny and oppression. She is also a firm advocate of employees, women, and children's rights, and conducts various lectures to educate and bring the law closer to the layman. Ladies and gentlemen, Attorney May Diane Azores, CPA. Okay, sige. Thank you so much for that introduction. Ayan. So, magandang hapon to all our future lawyers that are present here today. So, I'm looking at the chat box. I understand hindi lang mga tagalay sim yung present today. We also have participants from other schools, tama? Yes, we also have from uh, Consolation College. May nakita at ako kanina na UST Ligaspi. And I think itong hums is this... Uh, parang a uh, specialization ba sa senior high sorry ha uh, napapaghalata na yung uh, yung gap ng age natin hindi na namin naabot yung senior high well anyway uh, welcome to our webinar for this afternoon i'd like to thank the Lyceum of the Philippines for inviting me uh, well actually uh, nakakatawa itong Lyceum of the Philippines uh, uh, organization of Legal Management Students, I believe, they were uh, really determined to organize a webinar where I can speak. Uh, initially, there was a conflict in schedule, so hindi na tuloy. And then eventually, they said that, uh, no, attorney, the students are clamoring for you to speak during the webinar. So naawa naman ako. I really made time para makasama kayo this afternoon. Sige. So I was, uh, no, I was actually surprised that uh, this webinar was supposed to to be uh, uh, was only supposed to cover uh, reading and digesting cases, but uh, I prepared a uh, slide or a presentation thinking that I will be speaking about how to prepare you for law school, which of course includes uh, reading and digesting cases because. Uh, the skills that you need to hone before you become a lawyer, uh, and it starts with your pre-law hanggang sa law school, it's convoluted, di ba? So connected yan na skills na yan, uh, but reading and digesting cases, it's an integral part. So I, I don't think that we need 45 minutes just for that topic. So I, I will discuss that, reading and digesting cases, but I think you will benefit more if I will also give some tips on some other aspects of preparing for law school school, diba? So, mas maganda yun. Okay? And as I was hearing yung mga sharing ng mga estudyante, diba? I understand that uh, yung mga legal management students pala ay pinapag-digest na. Ayan, medyo surprising yan for me because uh, well, medyo ano ata siguro, uh, specialized talaga rin yung uh, course, yung pre-law na yan for those who really want to enter law school. So, my edge, di ba? My edge yung mga gustong sumali or gustong uh, mag-take ng legal management as a pre-law because you are also prepared not only uh, to the substantive portion of being a lawyer but more importantly on the skills that you need, you need to have, di ba? To become a lawyer. Okay, sige. So, without further, ano, chika, I would like to start now. Okay, sige. So, I have the assumption that all of the participants here would like to enter law school or at least thinking about it. Diba? Baka may iba, gusto lang yung certificate. Uh, diba? Kung gusto nyo lang yung certificate, okay lang lang naman. Diba? So, ang, ang hiling ko lang, huwag kayo matutulog. Diba? So, huwag nyo ako tutulogan kasi ano, oras de peligro ang alas dos. Diba? Tapos weekend pa. Yan. So, I'll make sure na ano, uh, medyo mataas yung energy ko this afternoon para hindi nyo ako tulogan. Okay, sige. Okay, sige. So as I was saying earlier, I will be providing tips uh, in order to prepare you for law school, not only digesting cases, but we will, uh, no, we will uh, allocate uh, sufficient time for that topic alone kasi yun rin naman talaga yung subject ng webinar na ito. Pero singitin lang rin natin yung ibang tips that you need to have, okay, or you need to know rather in order to become a better law student once the, ano, uh, once your opportunity uh, arrives, di ba, to become a law student. So siguro, the very first, or the I, I can say this is the most important 
uh, tip that I can give you, lalo na nasa prelo pa lang kayo or some, some of you nasa senior high school pa lang, papasok pa ng college, di ba? Regardless kung ano yung magiging prelo nyo, legal management, accountancy, political science, uh, yung iba psychology, yung iba AB English. So regardless of your pre-law, it is very important, it is imperative that you you develop effective study habits. So how will you do that? Well, the first step really is to know yourself. Okay, know thyself. Okay, know your um, learning method. Diba? Uh, understand how you learn. Understand how you uh, grasp new information. Diba? And how will you do that? Well, by participating during class discussions, by reading the assigned topics, diba? kung ano man yung pre-law nyo, make sure na you will make the effort, you will put in the effort to learn it. Okay? But sometimes, uh, some students waste their time in you know trying to understand a specific subject because they do not know how they learn. Okay? So you need to understand your learning style in order for you to study smart. Okay, kasi limited yung time nyo eh, lalo na yung online classes, I understand. Iba sa mga, or yung ibang mga estudyante, ang reklamo talaga is, ang daming requirement. Diba? Within such limited time, ang daming requirement. So, uh, medyo mahirap, diba? sa, dahil bukod sa wala kayong guidance, uh, face-to-face guidance ng mga teachers, you're also expected to manage your time on your own. Okay, so para masurvive nyo, yung course nyo or kung ano man yung pinag-aaralan nyo ngayon, you understand your learning style. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin ng learning style? Well, learning style is simply uh, the method or the manner how you understand diba? new information. So there are those who understand or learn information by simply you know, uh, by visual, visual representations. Diba? Okay na sila na may nakikita sila, may nababasa sila. Pag nabasa nila, pag nakita nila, tumatatak na. Diba? May mga ganong tao. Yung iba naman, they learn better if they hear what they are studying. Di ba? May mga ganong... Sila masyado effective yung nagbabasa. Mas gusto nila yung naririnig. Okay? Meron rin naman na combination of both. Di ba? Ako, part ako doon, combination of both. I need to read first before I... And then, and then I need to supplement it with uh, discussions. Di ba? Kailangan ko talaga marinig para tumata. Okay? So may ganon. Meron naman na iba rin na aside from visual uh, representations of what they are studying and hearing what they want to learn, some of them learn better if they themselves diba, make their own diagrams, flowchart, etc. Okay. So pag naintindihan nyo yun, okay, pag naintindihan nyo yung learning style nyo, you can now start to develop effective study habits. Diba? Kasi kung ikaw, hindi naman effective sa yung naririnig mo lang. Diba? Uh, akala mo, okay na yon kasi ang daming ina-upload na recorded lecture ng professor mo. Akala mo, yun yung kailangan mo, pero wala ka namang natututunan at the end of the day. Baka kasi, hindi yun effective sa'yo. Diba? Baka mas effective sa'yo na dinodrawing mo, or baka mas effective sa'yo yung nababasa mo lang. Diba? So, kailangan yung intindihin, yung, yung learning style nyo, and then you develop effective study habits. Diba? How will I uh, make sure na yung oras ko ay productive? Diba? How will I make sure na kapag binasa ko to, maintindihan ko at 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 at. Okay? So you develop effective study habits. You also know the time when you are most effective in learning. Well, there is a scientific study that uh, you are most effective in studying uh, during the wee hours of the morning. Diba? Pinakamaanga usually 5 a.m. daw. So, yun yung best time daw to absorb new information. But some people, hindi talaga morning person. Di ba? Mas effective talaga sila during the night. So, yung mga ganang factors, it will help you develop effective study habits. Unfortunately, I cannot give you a one-size-fits-all study habit na pag sinabi ko sa inyo, talagang okay na. Di ba? So, iba-iba tayo. That is why, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, know thyself. Kasi kayo lang talaga yung makakasabi ano yung effective sa akin. Okay? And ngayon pa lang, simulan nyo na yan because no one really becomes a lawyer without uh, you know having an effective study habit. Diba? Hindi pwedeng papasok ka lang sa klase tapos makikinig ka lang tapos magiging abogado ka. No one ever um, became a lawyer taking that route. Okay? So, kailangan mag-aral. Diba? Kailangan masipag magbasa. 
Diba? Kailangan masipag mag-attend ng classes, masipag magbasa ng cases. So, huwag niyong biglain yung sarili niyo na thinking na, hindi, sa law school na lang ako magsisipag kasi madali lang naman ipasa yung pre-law ko. So, huwag ganon. Okay, as early as now, uh, you make sure that you have effective study habits. Diba? Some of you, you're doing it for the grades. Diba? So, kung, kung, kung gayong, ganun kayo, grade conscious, okay lang rin. Diba? But uh, some of you, hindi masyadong concern sa grades, gusto lang talaga natututo din, okay lang rin. Okay. Ang important, uh, meron kayong study habit that is tailored specifically for you. Okay, So that's the first tip that I can give you. The second one is, you improve your reading speed and comprehension. Okay, Ito pwede na itong i-relate dito sa topic nyo this afternoon. Eh, diba? Reading and studying digest. I have heard some of you share na ang hahaba ng mga cases. Diba? Uh, ang daming ina-assign. Diba? So siguro sa legal management, I'm not sure. Baka medyo mababait pa yung professors that when you go to law school, pag first year, di ba, nag-a-assign ng 500 cases. Di ba, sometimes uh, umaabot pa ng 1,000 kung ganun talaga kalala yung professor. And uh, I'm not sure for some other professors, pero ako, I, I do not require any more na sulat kasi computerized na yung bar exam. But there are still law professors that still believe na mas effective yung sulat. So imagine, di ba, bukod sa kailangan mong magbasa ng ganun kadami cases, kailangan mo pa magsulat, di ba, ng denigest mo. So ang hirap, di ba, ang hirap i-manage ng oras mo. Lalo na for me, when I was studying law school, I was also working. So talagang uh, nakakabaliw, di ba, how you will uh, manage your time. So, One important skill that you really need to have is you improve your reading speed and comprehension. And how will you do that? By consistent practice. Okay? Wala namang ibang way. Magbasa na magbasa na magbasa. Okay? Unfortunately, yung pagbabasa ng novels or yung mga fiction, diba? uh, while it can help kasi it will develop your habit of reading, it will not really uh, uh, give you or instill you with the skill that you need naman to have when you are reading cases and when you are reading law books. Magkaiba kasi yung kailangan mo doon na attention and reading speed. Di ba? Sa novel kasi, yung iba sa inyo, baka yung isang sitting basahin yung isang libro na makapal. Di ba? Well, because it's interesting to you. The problem with uh, law books, siguro yung iba interesting for you. Yung iba, you will find it boring. Di ba? Kasi hindi nyo ma-imagine or masyadong technical. Like for example, yung tax na libro. Di ba? Parang ano ba to? Parang nakaka-nosebleed naman. So kahit i-compare mo yung yung thickness ng novel tsaka yung thickness ng law book, kahit mas manipis yung law book, parang feeling mo ang hirap tapusin yung law book. Di ba? So in improving your reading speed and comprehension, you can practice as well. Ba? Doon sa mga libro nyo that is also related to law subjects. Okay? So yun yung pag-practisan nyo. Okay? So what you can do, ito ginawa ko to personally, tinatimingan ko yung sarili ko. So I, I use a timer. Okay? Like for example, my target is to read 50 pages in let's say uh, one and a half hour. Okay? So magsiset ako ng timer and uh, since alam ko na meron akong timer, I will also not... Uh, I will also uh, uh, remind myself that I have a deadline. Diba? So I will not slack. Diba? Hindi yung one page pa lang, pahinga ulit. Diba? So kung may ganun, diba? pag alam nyo na meron kayong deadline, meron kayong inahabol, diba? mafo-force yung mind nyo, nyo to focus diba? and to comprehend whatever you are reading. Okay? So you improve that by consistent practice. Okay? So... For me, an effective way to improve reading speed and comprehension is to also underline, or for some of you, highlight diba? those uh, portions that you think are important. Kasi kapag gumagalaw, may, may mind and hand connection yung pagbabasa. Diba? Mas hindi boring. Diba? Mas hindi nakakanto. Kasi kung nakaganyan lang, diba? nakatapat lang yung libro nyo sa mukha nyo, diba? baka mangyari lang nag imagine na kayo, di ba? Nag-daydream na. Iba, nasa iba na yung utak, although yung face nyo is nakatapat pa sa libro. Okay? So you can take down notes while you're, you are reading, di ba? Para ma-make sure na talaga yung binabasa nyo, andun yung focus nyo. Okay? For comprehension, ganun rin. So it, it, you will acquire this by consistent practice. Okay? So for legal management students, I think this would, won't be a problem anymore because it is your law professors who are forcing you to read more 
ba? to read more digest, to read more cases, to read more books. So, uh, be thankful. Kahit sinusumpan nyo na yung professor nyo, ang daming pinapabasa. Be thankful because when you go to law school, hindi na kayo magugulat. Diba? Uh, ako na, nagulat pa rin ako kasi kahit ang accountancy is also a demanding course, Uh, well, most of the time, numbers kasi yung dinideal namin, di ba? Ang numero. Pagdating doon sa law school, ang dami rin binabasa pero puro text, di ba? So, uh, mas madami yung volume. So, andun pa rin yung gulat factor. Diba? So, kailangan mo pa rin i-adjust, okay? But it helped na during my pre-law, diba? meron akong effective study habit and I can read faster than most of my classmates. Kasi, uh, well, wala akong choice. Di ba? Andiyan yung deadline, andiyan yung demands ng pre-law course. Okay? So, consistent practice. You improve your reading speed and comprehension. Okay? The third one is you sharpen your writing skills. Okay? Like what I said earlier, becoming a lawyer involves convoluted skills. Di ba? It involves integrated skills. Okay? So, aside sa dapat mabilis ka magbasa, nakukomprehend ba yung binabasa mo, di ba? Kailangan lang magaling ka magsulat. Kailangan magaling ka magsulat. So, yung digest naman, yung paggagawa ng digest, uh, well, may, while it may involve writing skills, partly, hindi talaga masyado eh. Kasi most of what you are digesting, andun na rin naman sa face, di ba? Pwede mo nang ikakapit paste. Sometimes pwede mo lang i-modify. So, yung pag-sharpen mo ng writing skills, uh, while you can practice while digesting, pwede mo rin gawin is... Kung hindi kayo nare-require ng mga professors nyo to, like for example, make a reaction on a legal issue or to make your own legal opinion or whatsoever, kayo na, di ba? Have a proactive approach. Kayo na mismo yung mag-practice sa sarili nyo. Like for example, um, may nakita kayong legal issue. Okay? Or you maintain a blog. Madaming mga bagets, di ba? They have a vlog of blog. Okay? Or you have your own personal journal. May nakita kayong legal issue or something is bothering you. Like for example, uh, nababother kayo with the vote buying going on or nababother kayo with the issues on estate taxes of the Marcoses uh, or whatever whatever legal issue that may that you may come across. Okay, You can form your own opinion. Di ba? You, can, you can try to write about it. And it doesn't matter kung walang nakakita, di ba? kung hindi pa publish. Di ba? Kasi habang sinusulat nyo yung thoughts nyo, mas na-organize nyo. And it's uh, it's an important skill for a lawyer, for a law student, for a lawyer to have good writing skills. Kasi unlike other board examinations, ang bar exam po ay sulat, di ba? essay. Okay, so wala, wala kang takas. It's inevitable that you have good writing skills. You need to uh, be able to communicate di ba? your thoughts in an effective manner. And kung sa tingin nyo, there are still problems with your grammar, with your with your punctuation marks, with how you present your thoughts, sa tingin mo, masyado ka pang mahaba, masyadong wordy, yung mga essays mo, di ba? Doon pa lang, matatarget mo na. Okay? So, do not become a law student who goes to the bar review and their coaches will say, may problema ka pa sa grammar. Di ba? Para nakaka-offend yon. You are already a law student. And the mode of communication is supposed to be English. And then here comes your bar review coach saying, you may problema ka sa grammar. Diba? And uh, yung examiners sa bar exam, they are really uh, very strict about that. Diba? So if you want to become a lawyer, the least that you can do is to have a good grammar, diba? a good uh, command of the English language. Okay, So one way to do that, you write. Okay, kahit journal nyo lang yan, or you you can also join, di ba? Mga organizations, mga publications. I think may mga legal journal na nga, kahit mga pre-law, di ba? So you can also join that. Okay, so wag nyo pabayaan yung writing skills. Okay, so dyan na yung magaling ka magbasa, magaling ka magsulat. Okay, uh, sunod naman is you also create solid note-taking habits. So na-mention ko na kanina, while you are reading, you also take down notes. Okay. Or you underline whatever you think is important. Huwag naman yung nag-highlight kayo yung buong libro na. Mga <laughs> nakita kong ganun. Buong highlighter na. Lahat na lang importante. Okay. So hindi yun effective. Na kaya nga highlight. Di ba? Uh, hina-highlight mo lang sa lahat ng nabasa mo ano yung pinaka-importante. Okay. So aside from that, you also have the habit, habit of note-taking. Okay. So ito, isa ito sa mga tip na praktika. Hindi lang para sa puma, pagpasok sa law school, even in practice, when you become lawyers, di ba? kasi you will uh, 
have several meetings with clients. You will also talk to several people about their problems, legal problems. Diba? Hindi mo naman yan ma-absorb lahat. Diba? Unless you have an eidetic memory. Diba? Na maalala mo lahat. Diba? So, kailangan solid yung note-taking habits mo. Okay? Ako naman, admittedly, pangit talaga ang sulat ko. But I make sure that I write my own notes. Okay? Kaya naman nung nakapasa ako sa bar and may mga nagme-message, pwede bang pahingi ng notes mo? Uh, I always I have a disclaimer na ang pangit ng sulat ko. Baka hindi mo maintindihan. The notes ko because I know na it's a It's a, it's, a, it's a summary, it's an outline of the important points diba? in a subject. Ang problema lang, pangit yung sulat ko. So kung ganun rin yung problema nyo, it's okay. Because actually, you're, you're taking down notes for yourself. Unless, of course, kawang-gawa, diba? or may crush kayo na gusto ko yung pag-share ng notes, or mabait lang talaga kayo, gusto nyo i-share sa kaklase nyo yung notes nyo, diba? kayo ang inaasahan ng buong klase to summarize the lesson, pwede rin naman. Diba? na mag-encode kayo or maganda yung sulat nyo, sulat nyo lahat, okay lang rin naman yun. So, regardless of the intent or regardless kung para kanino mo ginagawa, just make sure that uh, ikaw mismo, pag binasa mo yung notes mo, maalala mo yung mga binasa mo. Okay? So, practice note-taking. Okay. I will discourage yung note-taking through computer. Uh, Usong-uso na yun sa mga bata, di ba? iPad or sa notepad na lang, ini-encode na lang sinasabi ng mga Professor, siguro effective for some, but nothing replaces kasi yung ano talaga eh. Yung pagtitake down ng notes na manually. Kasi it's a uh, technical act or it's a mechanical act rather. Diba? It's not merely you know moving your hand. Diba? Kasi pag nagsusulat ka, it also engages your mind. Diba? And it really helped me kasi nung pagdating sa bar exam, when I am presented a question, sometimes ang naalala ko, yung notes ko, I can also remember sa ang part ko ng notebook or libro ko isinulat, ano yung color ng ballpen na ginamit ko, ba? Diba? And even na-visualize ko kung ano yung itsura nung sinulat ko, ba? Diba? So, it just means to say na kapag yung note-taking mo is manual, mas tumatata, ba? Diba? It, it engages your mind kaysa yung encoded, ba? Diba? So, walang katamaran dapat. Diba? Bawal ang tamat. Diba? So, alam niyo yung pinasok niyo, you want to become lawyers, there's really no shortcuts. Okay? So, kahit computerized na yung bar, diba? kailangan niyo pa rin magkaroon ng ganong note-taking habit. Yung sulat pa rin. Okay? And even din siya joke, no? Uh, we had a talk uh, some time ago. Uh, he asked me, are you also taking down notes? I said, yes. Uh, it's an important skill that I learned during law school. Sabi niya, ako rin. Diba? I have notes na nung law school ko pa lang, andito pa rin sa akin. Diba? It, it still helped me kasi it refreshes my mind. Diba? I can still recall kung kailan ko sinulat, diba? anong color ng ballpen. So, ganun lang rin. Diba? So, mas effective talaga yung ganun. The problem lang is, well, kasi uh, paper pa rin, so, uh, mas mabilis masira. But, uh, if you maintain it well, diba? if you preserve it well, diba? mas, mas helpful siya in the long run. Okay? So, you create solid note-taking habits. And in relation rin sa pag-digest ng case, di ba, lagi ko nare-relate kasi yun talaga yung topic nyo pala. So, when you are reading cases, okay, sabihin ko rin ito mamaya, pero sabihin ko na, kasi na-mention ko na rin yung note-taking. When you are reading cases, isulat nyo na rin yung sa tingin nyo important na facts. Yung sa tingin nyo kailangan talaga ma-present sa digest. Okay? Yung iba kasing estudyante, ang ginagawa nila, nakaupo or nakahiga, binabasa yung cases, nakatitig lang sa screen. Tapos, nung part na na i-digest na yung cases, makakalimutan na ano nga yun, ano nga yung nabasa ko, ano yung facts. Diba? Sa akin ang oras. Diba? So, in order to save time, diba? in order to become more efficient, while you are reading a specific fact, ano, nabasa nyo, ay, ganito pala, may namatay, ganyan. Or uh, ganito pala yung remedy na in niya sa trial court. Isulat nyo na. Diba? No, kailangan, andito to sa digest ko. Or kung hindi naman pinapasulat ng professor yung digest, pwede nyo nang i-copy-paste. Diba? Sa word. Tapos sa kanyo na lang i-arrange later on. Okay? So that's very helpful as well. So now go to the portion where uh, you are more interested in. Yung digesting ng cases. Okay? So regardless kung ilan yung ibigay sa inyong cases, as much as possible, try to read the full text of the case. Diba? Uh, I'm sure some of you are guilty of you know searching on Google the digested uh, 
Okay. Uh, kung hindi pa uso yun sa legal management, mga mababait pa yung mga estudyante na to sa law school po, usong uso yung iba. Okay. Na, nagsisearch na lang sa Google ng digest, tapos yun na, lang, yun na lang rin yung gagamitin na isasubmit sa professor or during recitations. And uh, mind you, considering ran nga sa volume, sa dami ng pinipigay na digest or na cases for digest ng mga professors, it's really impossible that you will work alone. Okay, so ang technique ng mga estudyante, and it, this is an open secret. Okay, like for example, isang subject, 500 cases, 30 tayo na magkakaklase, we will divide. Okay, we will divide the cases among ourselves, i-digest mo yon, and then you will share to uh, your classmates. I-modify na lang ng konti, diba? para hindi mahalata ng professor na uh, pare-pareho yung digest nyo. Okay, alam rin naman yan ng professor. So yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, hindi naman yan bawal. Okay, it's allowed. Ang problema lang, may mga kaklase kayo na masakit talaga sa ulo, di ba? Na inassignan mo. Ang bibigay sa yung digest parang hindi naman digest. Nobela, di ba? Ang haba nga ng ang haba na ng case, ang haba pa ng digest. Di ba? So it's not a digest, di ba? A digest is supposed to be brief, di ba? So yun yung nakakainis rin, okay? Uh, well, one factor din siguro is hindi sila marunong and uh, there are law schools talaga that do not address these issues. Well, at least for our law school, we were lucky enough na meron kaming orientation and we were taught how to digest cases before we uh, suffered uh, digesting several cases. So at least meron ganon. But for some law schools, hindi. At meron rin namang law student na talagang matigas yung ulo. Diba? Sa tingin nila, lahat importante, andyan nilalagay. Diba? So kung isusulat mo yun, diba? kukunot talaga yung noo mo kasi ang haba-haba. Diba? And pag pinarecite sa'yo yung case, parang wala rin. Diba? Parang binasa mo yung full text ng case. Okay? So uh, while I will suggest that you read the full text of the case in digesting cases, make sure na iyon ay brief. Okay? You make sure na ang malalagay lang doon ay yung importante, di ba? Kung ano yung relevant sa subject, di ba? Kung ano yung kailangan malaman for recitations, di ba? And ano yung doctrine that is involved in that case, okay? So, uh, in order for you to do that, again, as I mentioned, while you are reading the case, di ba? full text of the case, take note of the important facts. Okay? So, there are two ways to do that. You can you know, copy-paste sa so word, yung mga tatingin yung important portions. You can also take down notes na uh, ito importante. Okay, ito kailangan nakapresento sa facts ko. Uh, siguro isang secret that I can tell you. Well, hindi naman ito sinabi sa amin, but this is effective for me. In reading cases, I always start with the bottom. I always start with the decision. Doon ako nagsisimula. Why? Well, because... At the back of my mind, I already have a guide on what this case is talking about. Okay, like for example, binasa ko na yung dispositive portion. Ah, okay, this is a question of jurisdiction. So, pag pumunta ako let from the very beginning, pwede ko nang i-omit yung, or hindi ko na masyadong bibigyan ng attention yung facts na hindi naman masyadong relevant sa issue ng jurisdiction. Kasi it's important rin kasi sa case na isite lahat ng facts ng case. Pero hindi naman dyan lahat relevant. Okay, so pag, at least pag alam ko na yung decision, pag bumalik ako sa facts, yung mind ko, meron na ring trigger na, oy, jurisdiction ang issue dito. So yun yung hanapan mo ng facts. Okay, so you may find that helpful as well. Na magsimula sa do, saka magsimula. Okay, so pwede yun, pwede nyo yung gawin. Okay, uh, that's an important tip. Okay, uh, it, it, it is effective for me. Uh, pero sometimes sobrang hahaba rin kasi ng ibang cases na it involves several issues. So how will you address those cases na ang dami-daming issues? Like for example, I'm not sure if if you already read this case, yung, yung sa case on um, uh, martial law, like for example, yung pag-uphold ng martial law na dineclear ni Duterte, diba? sobrang haba nun. Or yung case involving sa constitutionality ng RH law. Diba? Sobrang haba. Ang dami-daming issues. Diba? So how will you address those cases na ang dami-daming issues? May issues sa jurisdiction, may issues sa substantive portion. Ba, hindi mo na alam paano ito i-digest. Diba? Parang lahat importante. Okay. So ang gagawin nyo lang, you take note, ano ba yung subject? Okay. Para saan ko ba ito dinadigest? Okay. If I am digesting this case for a subject that is involved with procedure. Like, for example, remedial law. So that is the subject that is uh, involved in the procedural aspect of law. Okay. So 
kung procedural aspect yung subject, di ba? Hindi mo naman pwedeng i-include sa digest mo yung substantive portion kasi wala nang paki yung subject noon. Di ba? So kung remedial law yung subject na nag-assign ng case na yon, tingnan mo lang rin kung ano yung relevant sa subject. On the other hand, kung ang nagpa-digest sa na professor, ang subject niya is involved sa constitutional law, syempre ang titingnan mo lang rin yung constitutional law issues. Okay? So hindi mo na isasama sa digest mo yung procedural aspect. Okay? Pero pwede mo pa rin namang basahin. Okay? Para mas maintindihan mo yung case. The problem is, uh, and ito, sa tingin ko, inaddress na rin ito ng left slowly, gradually, kahit papano. During our first year, we were assigned several cases. And during the first year, substantive most of the subjects. Okay, constitutional law, family law, ba? civil law, criminal law. Puro ano lang, substantive. Pero yung ina-assign sa aming cases, ang daming cases na may mga questions of procedure. So syempre, hindi pa namin yun gets. For example, ano tong certiorari? Ano tong Rule 45? Ano to? Diba? So habang nagbabasa kami ng cases, wala, blindsided kami kung ano yung binabasa namin with regards to the procedure. Pero ngayon, I think they are amending the curriculum para yung procedural aspect, it will go hand in hand with the substantive law, which I think is better. Kasi mas maganda yung, alam mo na yung substantive portion ng batas, alam mo na rin yung procedure, di ba? Kasi at present, ang nangyayari, first year and second year, puro substantive. Third year mo palang malalaman kung ano yung procedure. Okay, so uh, yun yung sa tingin ko pangit with the current legal curriculum. Pero ngayon, in, ina-amend na. Okay? Sa US kasi ganun eh. First year ka pa lang, may procedural subject ka na. Okay? So yun. Okay, medyo nalayo na ako dun sa uh, dinidiscuss ko. When you are digesting cases, huwag kayo masyadong ma-overwhelm na ang haba. Okay? Because not, of, not all of it is relevant in the case digest that you will submit to your professor. Diba? You take note immediately para saan. Okay? Para saan ba tong digest ko na to? Is this for constitutional law subject? Is this for a procedural law subject? So when you have that in mind, you will also take note na nagla-digest ako. Okay? Uh, and I am only addressing yung procedural aspect. So dito ko lang ipofocus yung digest ko. Okay? So huwag bida-bida na isama mo lahat. Diba? Isama mo lahat. Pero hindi naman pala tinatanong or hindi naman pala relevant dun sa subject nyo. Okay? Unless of course ang, ang instruction is i-digest nyo as it is. Including procedural subject, ibang usapan nyo. Okay? So in order to be more detailed as to how to digest cases. Okay? So these are the steps or these are the particular tips that I can give to you. Okay? So, when you're digesting cases, you always start with the heading of the digest. Okay? So, anong nakalagay doon sa heading of the digest? So, it will simply provide for the title of the case, the GR number. So, GR means general reference. Okay? And the dates. Okay? The dates of the case. Sometimes, there are cases na ang haba-haba. It's consolidated. Okay? Madaming parties involved. Okay? So, if the case title is too lengthy, you can just limit it to yung first na parties that were mentioned in the case and you can also just mention the GR number yung yung isa lang okay you can just say et al okay hindi mo na kailangan i-mention lahat okay? kasi ano understood na rin naman yun okay so that's the first part okay no brainer okay so kailangan mo ng heading as to the format ganito yung yung format so you will present it in three um uh groups so you have for facts, ruling. Usual ang ginagamit na word is held. Okay? Pwede ring ruling. So, as a matter of preference na yan. But nasanay ako sa held. Okay? So, facts, issue, held. So, for better presentation, you present it in all caps. Okay? You can also present it in bold letters. Okay? So, in that sequence, facts, issue, held. Okay? How will you now present the facts? Okay? So, for the facts, you make it concise. Okay? Yung presentation ng facts, admittedly, um, mahirap rin for a student who is just starting with digesting cases to pinpoint ano ba yung mga important facts na kailangan ko i-present. Okay. Kaya nga, na-mention ko na kanina, kailangan magsimula kayo sa dulo. Mas importante yun. Para pag bumalik kayo sa facts, alam nyo na kung ano yung relevant. Okay. In presenting your facts, dahil alam nyo na yung decision, di ba, nakasimula na kayo sa dulo, Kung sa tingin nyo, hindi naman masasagot yung ruling ng court. 
'di ba? Wala namang connect doon sa decision. Huwag niyo na isama. Okay. Kasi mas maganda na concise talaga yung fact. Uh, I remember one of my uh, colleagues na ngayon, okay, or the senior at that time, I was a junior law student. Sabi niya sa akin, ang haba ng digest mo. <laughs> I was presenting it siguro five sentences, uh, sometimes hanggang six. Uh, sa kanya, mas okay yung two to three. Two to three sentences sa facts lang. Uh, it works for some, for some cases. Pero sa iba talaga hindi maiwasan. Kasi kailangan talaga ma-present mo yung ibang relevant facts. Pero kung paulit-ulit kasi yung doctrine na involved doon sa case, matagal na siyang ano, matagal na siyang doctrine ng Supreme Court, yun pwede yun mag-work na talagang 2 to 3. Okay, 2 to 3 sentences. Okay, hindi mo na kailangan i-mention taga saan ba yung parties, di ba? Ano yung nangyari before that? Okay. So just make your facts concise. Okay? So yung ito yung sinabi ko, di ba? Sa letter B na, na dito, sa letter B na bullet Okay. Make sure that the matters which will be cited in the decision are also included in the facts. Diba? That is why it's very important na nabasa nyo yung decision kasi pag tinignan nyo sa facts, makoconnect nyo na. Okay, makoconnect nyo na. And alam nyo na rin ano ba yung relevant. Okay? So that's one. The third one is, if in case there is an abbreviation, like for example, Court of Tax Appeals or Court of Appeals, okay, you spell it out okay, and then in closing parenthesis yung abbreviation sa first mention. Okay, para sa succeeding mention, you do not need to spell out anymore. Okay, so ganon. Okay, that's the proper way. The fourth one, you include dates in the facts whenever necessary. Okay, so kung for example, sa decision na kabasa nyo, may issue ng prescription. Okay, therefore, that's your cue na kailangan mo i-mention sa facts yung dates. Okay, pero kung wala namang connect, like for example, ang, ang ruling ng court uh, pertains to remedies, hindi naman... Uh, or jurisdiction ulit, hindi naman relevant yung dates, okay. pwede mo lang i-omit. Okay? So, do not be afraid to omit facts that are not relevant to the decision. Okay? Ang sukatan ng magandang digest is brief, uh, it's concise, and it includes all the relevant facts and the doctrine of the case. Okay? And then, uh, next tip is you can include a one or two liner on what the trial and appellate court the decision was. Okay? So, kung meron man, okay, ilagay nyo na lang. Hindi na kailangan i-mention yung dispositive portion ng Court of Appeals kasi minsan sinasama yon sa uh, decision ng Supreme Court. Diba? Naka, naka-reproduce verbatim yung decision ng Court of Appeals or yung appellate court. Diba? Hindi mo na kailangan. So, you can just uh, summarize it into one sentence. Like, for example, the Court of Appeals affirmed the decision of the Regional Trial Court. Or the Court of Appeals denied the motion for reconsideration. So mga ganun na lang. Okay na yun. Okay? Para introduction lang yun. Okay? Para introduction lang yun. Ah, kaya nakaabot sa Supreme Court. Or para lang mapakita mo na, ah, ganito yung flow ng case. Okay? So ganun yung presentation ng facts. Okay? The, net, the next aspect of your digest is, of course, the issue. Okay? So how will you present your issue? So you can start with WON, all caps. So that is just an abbreviation for whether or not. Okay? Whether or not. Okay? So it's a question. Diba? Whether or not uh, the, the Court of Appeals erred in ruling. Uh, ganito, ganyan. Okay? So since it's a question, you end it with a question mark. Okay? Whether or not... Uh, the, the case is uh, ripe for judicial uh, adjudication. So, question mark. Okay. Pero kung yung ruling hindi naman uh, sumasagot ng issue or it's not answerable or it's not really in the form of a question, pwedeng hindi na. Okay. So, kung uh, answerable by yes or no, okay, answerable by yes or no, you make sure that you also uh, present your issue in such way. Okay, para pagdating mo sa decision, may connect. Okay? For the issue or for the presentation of issue, make sure that it's as comprehensive as possible. Okay? Kasi dito talaga maintindihan rin yung rationale for the ruling of the Supreme Court. Okay? So, for example, did the CA commit grave abuse of discretion? Diba? Or is the CA correct or erred? Diba? So, yung mga ganon, i-present nyo as comprehensive as possible. Okay? Uh, kung related yung decision ng Court of Appeals, yun talaga yung subject ng decision, i-mention nyo rin kung ano yung ruling. Okay? So, that's how you present your issue. Kung multiple issues naman, okay, you include 
the number. Okay? Like for example, issue number one or issue number two. Okay? So wag niyo yung pagsama-sama. Okay? Para mas maganda yung presentation. Okay? So you segregate them. Okay? It's also important in order for you to have an easy comprehension of the case. Kasi kung ipaparisite yan sa inyo and chapso yung issues, mas mahihirapan rin kayo. Diba? So mawawala ng silbi yung digest. Okay? So iseparate nyo, isegregate nyo kung multiple yung issues. But again, in presenting your issues, you again take note for what subject are you digesting this case. Okay? So kung, kung remedial aspect yung dinadigest nyo and isa lang naman yung issue for the procedural aspect yun lang yung include nyo okay pero kung multiple issues isegregate nyo lang okay and on the last part on the ruling okay dito naman length really is not a problem kasi dito mo na ipepresent yung doctrine ng Supreme Court okay so wala tayong ano wala tayong um, rule na 2 to 3 sentences or dapat ganito lang kaikli Diba? Kasi kung importante naman talaga sa decision ng Supreme Court, i-mention mo. Okay? But if you feel that there are paragraphs na ano na uh, already mentioned, diba? it's just a reiteration of what was already mentioned, okay? pwede mo nang i-omit. Okay? Pwede mo nang i-omit. Pero kung kailangan talaga i-mention, do not hesitate to include it in your uh, digest. Okay? Doon sa ruling portion. Okay. And if possible, and uh, in order to aid you for your recitation and for your review, you can also italicize, you can underline okay, the necessary doctrine okay, of the issue okay, or of the ruling of the Supreme Court. Sometimes sa mga estudyante na talagang gigil na gigil sa pag-digest, may mga nilalagay pa silang doctrine of the case. Uh, may mga nilalagay pang dispositive portion. Uh, Dineduplicate pa dun sa digest mismo. Ah, uh, Kung hindi naman nare-require ng professor, okay nang i-omit nyo. Pero kung ginagawa nyo lang yon for your note-taking, pwede rin naman. Di ba? Para pag tinanong ka, what is the doctrine in this case? Alam mo na agad. Di ba? So, hindi yon necessary. So, yung basic elements lang talaga of a digest, itong tatlo. Okay? The facts, the issue, and the ruling. Okay? So, I have actually made a digest while you were, ano, while you were uh, making the introduction. Okay, I I just digested one case that I am working on as well. Okay, uh, for for a case or for a motion for reconsideration that I was making. Okay, so this is the case of Miranda versus Tuliao. Okay, so ito rin, uh, medyo ano to actually, medyo famous to ngayon kasi paulit-ulit namin na mention ni presidential candidate Laxon. So this is a case on... Uh, well, mostly procedural, okay? So, ito yung isa sa mga sinasite ni Laxon uh, as basis why he did not surrender, di ba? Why he was able to um, file, a, file, a, uh, file an appeal with court even though hindi siya nakakulong, okay? So, you can read this case kung interesado kayo. So, just to, ano, just to present to you, di ba? How I digest should look like, ganyan lang. Ganyan lang pa simple. At least for law school, ganyan yung isura. Okay, so you have a heading, you have the GR number of the case, you have the date. Okay, so if you can notice yung facts ko, okay, may clear lang rin, di ba? concise lang rin. And if you read it, and if you connect it with the issue, yung relevant lang din. Okay, kasi pag tinignan mo, hindi ko na minensyon na may nahanap na cadaver. Okay, or ganito yung mode ng pagpatay. Di ba? Hindi naman relevant. Kasi yung issue ko lang naman dito is, pwede ba ako mag-file ng motion sa korte kahit hindi ako sumusurrender? Diba? So since alam ko na ito yung issue, yung minimension ko lang na facts rin is yung relevant doon sa issue ko. Okay? And then for the ruling portion, okay, uh, if you can notice, yung portion lang rin na ruling na kinapi ko from the Supreme Court decision, yung connected lang rin sa issue. Okay? I did not anymore uh, replicate the dispositive portion uh, and if you read that case, if you're interested, pag dininin mo yung case na yan, ang dami pang diniscuss ng Supreme Court in uh, uh, in defending its ruling. Okay? Pero pag sinamarize mo na rin naman, yan lang yung sinasabi. Na pwede kang mag-file ng motion or pwede kang mag-seek ng relief before the, before the court even though you did not surrender diba? to the court. Kasi hindi naman daw kailangan na merong custody over the body of the accused ang isang uh, trial court who is deciding your case. Okay, So, ganun lang yung pag-present ng case digest. Okay, So, itong case na to, pwede mong ipasok sa criminal law. Pero, uh, 
since this uh, case is actually ano eh, a landmark case on uh, remedies of a of an accused so i made sure as well na yung digest ko yun yung doctrine na pinepresent kasi ito yung importante okay so as much as possible ito naman yung ano ko rule of thumb if i encode my case digest will it be or will it fit in a one page if it can then it's a digest if i exceeded one page already then i might have to omit some portions of my digest okay but it's not always applicable because like what i told you yung ibang cases naman talaga sobrang haba so kailangan rin talaga na medyo uh, habaan mo rin yung digest mo okay na pwede mag-exceed ng one page pero kung hindi naman masyadong mahaba yung decision mo like for example 15 pages lang 20 pages na kaya mo na yan ma squeeze in into one page okay So that's how you digest your case. Now, screenshot nyo na lang kung gusto nyo ng example. Okay? Sige. So going back doon sa ating discussion. Okay. So actually, yun yung last part ng uh, discussion ko on digesting cases. Because like what I told you, wala naman, wala naman masyadong complicated. At least for the format in digesting cases, matrabaho lang talaga. Diba? Matrabaho lang talaga. It's uh, really taxing to read cases, diba? to pinpoint ano yung relevant facts. But uh, if you will at least be consolated by this, it's normal na sa simula ang haba ng digest nyo. Okay. Kahit ako, nung first year ako, pag binalikan ko yung digest ko, parang gusto kong batukan yung sarili ko, ang haba ng digest, hindi yung digest. Diba? So it also comes with practice. Okay, So as you digest more cases, you will also acquire the skill na uh, kaya ko naman pala i-reduce ng ganito lang. Okay, so, kaya rin madaming binibigay sa inyong cases ang mga professors nyo. Kasi even when you become lawyers, ang dami yung kailangan rin basahin. Okay? Within a limited period of time. So, unlike sa school na pwede kayong humirit sa professor, pwede bang ano, extend ng submission. Diba? In actual practice, hindi. So, basahin mo yan kahit gano'ng kakapal. Diba? And you really need to uh, brief okay, the cases that you will read, find the relevant uh, portion of the case that you can use diba? in defense of your client. Okay? So, wag nyong kainisan yung pag-digest ng cases. It's part of life. It's part of becoming a lawyer. Diba? It's difficult. It's taxing. Diba? Sometimes it take so much of your time but eventually you will find it useful especially in actual practice okay so uh, practice 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 lang rin okay kaya nga tinawag daw ang ang pagiging abogado na practice rin because it's consistent practice there is no perfection in becoming a lawyer diba? you learn something new every day okay so do not be ano discouraged kung sa tingin niyo hindi pa kayo masyadong marunong But just keep on practicing. And kahit maging lawyer na kayo, mag-practice na rin naman kayo. Okay? Alright. So, uh, moving forward naman as to other tips that I can give you before you go to law school. Okay? So, one tip that I can give you in order to excel, kung yun yung target nyo, di ba? you want to excel in law school, but you get way ahead, you read in advance. Okay? Maging bida-bida sa law school, but not so much. Nakakainis na na kayo ng professor nyo kahit hindi tinatawag kaya na magre-recite. So, when I say get way ahead, read in advance, okay? Make sure that you have read the topics assigned for the meeting and kung kaya ng oras nyo, basahin nyo na rin yung next na topic, okay? Kasi may mga ganun na professors, okay? Yung itatest ka talaga kung nagbabasa, nagtatanong doon sa next topic ta, ba? Diba? So, you will impress the professor if you can answer his or her questions even though Uh, supposed to be next meeting pa yun to discuss. Okay? So you read in advance and yung topics naman, it's all connected. So if you read in advance, uh, mas maintindihan mo rin yung discussion. Okay? So kung pagdating nyo sa law school, you are a full-time student, you actually have no reason why you cannot read in advance. Okay? Siguro understandable for working law students kasi mahirap naman talaga i-manage yung time. Okay? Pero it's a uh, minimum requirement that at least you have read the topic assigned for the day, the cases assigned for the day. Okay? So do not go to class unprepared. Okay? Kasi pag pumasok ka sa class, eh, hindi ka nagbasa. Sinabi mo yun sa professor mo, ay nako, okay, mananlangin ka na. Okay? Pag-isip-isipan mo na kung gusto mo pa maging uh, lawyer. Okay? 
kasi may mga ibang professors na talagang uh, nagagalit. Diba? Ako naman, hindi naman ako gano'n. Pag sinabihan ako, hindi pa ako nakapagbasa. Diba? I, I maintain my composure. I mean, I remain calm, pero deep inside. Uh, may, iba na, may masama na akong sinasabi sa'yo. Diba? Markado ka na sa akin. Diba? Na sasabihan mo ako, hindi ka nagbasa. Diba? How dare you? Diba? Uh, I'm also busy, but I, but I found time diba? to review our topic for the day in order to attend this class. Okay? So never say that to your professor na hindi ka nakapagbasa. Diba? So uh, kung sa tingin mo talaga wala kang nabasa, diba? kung matapang ka, gusto mo pa rin pumasok, magrosaryo ka na hindi ka matawa for recitation. Okay? Pero kung matawag ka and wala ka talagang alam, eh, wala. Okay? Uh, siguro just, ano, just tell your uh, professor nicely or attempt at least to answer the question And uh, just be humble na, sorry, I do not know the answer. Huwag lang na hindi ako nagbasa. Okay? Or huwag lang sasabihin na, sorry, I, I studied for another subject. Ay, naku. Okay? Expect a failing mark. Okay? So huwag ganaan. Okay? Next is for recitations naman. Okay? Sa so, tingin ko, kasi pinagbasehan ko yung previous na invite. So pati recitation kinover ko. For recitation, okay, it's a part of becoming a law student. So most of the law schools still adopt the Socratic method. So when you say Socratic, Socratic method, yung professor yung magtatanong sa'yo. Diba? And uh, wala talagang lesson na mangyayari na i-spoon feed sa'yo. Ito yung kailangan mo malaman. Diba? The professor will uh, guide you through questioning kung ano yung kailangan mo malaman. Okay? So, be prepared for graded recitations. Okay? Hindi talaga yan may iwasan, lalo na kung konti lang kayo sa klase. Diba? Matatawag at matatawag kayo. Kung minalas-malas, kayo lang yung napag-trip pa ng professor. Buong klase kayo lang yung nag-recite. Okay? Kaya nga naman sinabi ko, huwag kayong papasok na hindi kayo nag-aaral. Okay? Okay. Or kung kung matapang kayo, sa so tingin nyo talaga, lucky kayo for the day, di ba? At least, di ba? pag tinawag kayo, try or attempt to ano attempt to answer. Okay. So for graded recitations, ang kalaban mo talaga dyan is kaba. Okay. Aside from, siguro hindi ka nagbasa. So, kung prepared ka naman, nabasa mo yung topics, nabasa mo yung cases assigned, deny just mo. Di ba? So, You, you will have the confidence diba, to attend the class. But it's understandable na pag natawag na yung pangalan mo, parang nawala lahat ng inaral mo. Diba? Parang may black out, uh, out of nowhere. Diba? Parang nawala lahat ng inaral mo. So what I do, okay, to have a good recitation, at least this is applicable kasi no, face-to-face pa yung classes. But I think there's there is already a hope na babalik na kayo sa normal, eh, normal na classes. So what I do, When I am called by the professor, I, I of course, uh, well, I stand with uh, conviction. Na feeling ko alam na alam ko. I do not show any indication that I am not prepared or that I am afraid. Okay, I always place my hands behind my back. Kasi feeling ko baka pag nanginig, pag nakita yan ng professor, kung mas lala kong pagtitripan. Okay, at least ito ginagawa ko nung ano, first year, second year. Kasi pag third year, fourth year ka na, matapang ka na rin eh. Diba? So ano na, hindi ka na masyadong kakabahan sa recitation. And I look my professor straight in the eye before I answer. But I, when I am talking, tinitingnan ko na lang yung noo. Kasi feeling ko, pag tinignan ko yung mata, mawawala ako sa flow ng aking sinasabi. Okay. So, when you're answering question, you can, you know, repeat the question para meron kang time diba, to compose your thoughts diba, and make sure na responsive yung sagot mo sa tanaw. Okay. So, listen well to the discussion, listen well to the question, and make sure na responsive yung sagot mo sa tanong. Okay? So kahit mali man yan, at least responsive. Di ba? At least ma-argue mo. Okay? Make sure as well that you go straight to the point. Huwag paligoy-ligoy. Okay? Kasi pag paligoy-ligoy ka, halatang halata na hindi mo alam yung sagot. Okay? So go straight to the point and maintain your composure. Okay? Again, ganun yung tip na uh, do not show any indication of weakness because uh, if your professor see that you are nervous or see that you are afraid, parang Achilles heel yan eh. Titirahin ka talaga na, ah, okay, natatakot to sa akin. So, sunod-sunod yung tanong. Iba? Hanggang sa manginig ka na lang. I have witnessed one of my classmates that, that really cried. Talagang umiyak talaga ng bongga-bongga during recitation. So, 
yung professor ko naman naawa. So, we were dismissed. So, pasalamat na rin kami. Uh, but uh, it's uh, humiliating, di ba? Parang, you are already working, you are already a professional, tapos umiyak ka because of presentation. So, uh, what you can do, you can also practice, di ba? Kahit mukha ka ng baliw, magsalita ka mag-isa, you face a mirror, and then uh, you you practice as if you are reciting. Okay, so that's for recitation. And another tip, at least for um, law school, you practice answering my questions already. Okay, so for legal management students, siguro yung mga professors nyo, they are using previous bar questions in your midterms and finals. So, isang tip yan sa inyo. So, so kung, kung sa tingin nyo yung, uh, yung subject nyo ay, or yung subject nyo ay bar subject, you can research previous bar questions kasi madaming professor na gumagamit ng previous bar questions in their midterms and final examinations. So, at least, di ba, alam nyo na. Okay, you're one step ahead of the game. You can also practice writing persuasive arguments. So I already mentioned this. You practice speaking. Okay? So these webinars this is also helpful for you. You can participate. Diba? You can also volunteer in speaking engagements. Yeah, so you will be practiced in speaking. Okay? And when you go to law school, one important uh, tip that I can also give you, this is your priority number one. In your first day on law school, find good friends. Okay, make sure that you will have a good circle. Okay, when I say good circle, you you should have friends in law school that will motivate you to be become better. Wag kayo makikita grupo dun sa laging umiinom every ano every day. Okay, yung sa mga sa tamad, di ba? Yung mga hindi nagdadigest. So make sure na yung mga kaibigan yong di ba competitive, di ba? Alam niyo na decidido maging abogado. Kasi if you have the good friends, if you have good friends, di ba? If you if you know that these friends of yours are determined, diba, to excel in law school as well, ba mahiya ka rin, diba, na tama rin. Okay, so yon you find good friends. And aside from that, aside from motivating you to become to become a better law student, you also need someone talaga to rely on, especially when things get toxic. It's already overwhelming, diba? So you find good friends. Okay, especially kung magwo-working law student kayo. Diba? There are days na hindi kayo, for example, makakapag-photocopy, kung ano man yung kailangan yung photocopy. Kung may mga mabubuti kayong kaibigan, tapos mga full-time student, you can rely on them. Okay? And ito, you can do this as early as now. You can read news and update yourself with recent legal developments. Okay? So, you always apprise yourselves ano ba yung uh, balita ngayon, ano ba yung hot topic, ano ba yung legal issues involved, are there new laws that were passed? Okay? Kasi it's also important. Okay. And ito, this is already uh, something that I should not tell you anymore. You go to class. Okay. So, wag tamaran. Okay. So, kahit working law student kayo, there should be no reason okay, uh, why you should not go to class. Because uh, even though yung professor nyo lagi lang nagpaparisite, for sure, may, ma may matututunan kayo dyan. Okay. So, you go to class always. And then, sayang ng tuition. Diba? Sayang ng tuition binayaran nyo. So, always go to class. And then, finally, of course, while... Uh, Siguro, right? as, of, as of now, you have the impression that uh, law school is a uh, difficult environment. Diba? It's something that really uh, requires so much of your attention and it will really requires hard, hard work. It's also important that you take a rest. Okay, You need it to maintain your sanity. So, hindi naman totoo na boring ang buhay estudyante, buhay law student. Diba? I have found good friends in law school. Na we really had so much fun together as well while at the same time learning. Diba? So we create study groups and kapag tapos na rin naman yung midterms, you also travel together, di ba? So when the time permits, you can also take a rest, okay? Hindi naman kailangan talagang laging nag-aaral, okay? And it, it also applies even when you are still in, on your pre-law. Excelling in a dog-eat-dog -dog environment such as law school, it is hard, uh, admittedly, okay? Especially kung may circumstances kayo that are beyond your control, may family issues, or kailangan nyo talaga magtrabaho kasi walang magpa-finance sa, sa pag-aaral nyo, or may personal issues, but it's not impossible, okay? So with the right conviction, with the right grit, diba? with the right determination, and making sure that you put in your hard work, okay? Uh, and... When you always remember why you start, why you started, di ba? Alam nyo yung purpose nyo, why you want to become a lawyer. Even though everything becomes too overwhelming. Even when the circumstances uh, already, or the rational way, or the rational decision, considering all the circumstances is just to quit, okay? Just always remember why you started. So uh, you can do this on your first day of law school. You write down 
on a piece of paper while you are here, you post it on a wall. And every time you feel like quitting or you, you feel that everything becomes too much to bear, you look at that note and it will always remind you why you started in the first place. Okay? Sige. So that ends my discussion. Thank you so much for your attention. Sige. Thank you so much, Potorni Azores, for sharing your expertise with us. And I am very sure our participants who are currently watching learned a lot from you. So now we will proceed to our question and answer portion. Attorney Azores, for the first question, what we have right here, uh, Attorney Azores. Paano po ba namin hahanapin yung doctrine and ruling if wala pong syllabus na binigay yung law professor? Ano yun? Sorry? Paano hahanapin yung? Paano po ba namin hahanapin yung doctrine and ruling if wala pong syllabus na binigay yung law professor? Ay, yung doctrine. Well, yung doctrine andun naman sa ano? Andun rin naman sa Supreme Court decision. Okay. Kung walang syllabus, for sure, alam nyo na rin naman yung, ano, yung subject title. Diba? So, polit ko sinasabi, madaming doctrine. Sometimes, there are several doctrines in one case. So, in order to digest a case for a specific subject, you always have in mind, ano bang subject na ito? Okay? So, para mahanap nyo yung doctrine, isipin nyo lang ulit, ano bang subject ito? Is this constitutional law? Okay. So, okay. so babasahin ko tong case na to. Case about RH law. So, dapat ang hahanapin ko lang na doctrine is related sa constitutional law. Okay, so it's always on it's always in the Supreme Court decision naman. Okay, hindi naman 'yan na uh, hidden message na kailangan niyo pang kailangan niyo pa ng syllabus. Okay, so with the right comprehension and with consistent practice, mas mabilis niyo nang ma-pinpoint ano ba yung doctrine sa case. Thank you po, Attorney. For the second question we have here, how to effectively narrow down information intake when time is not enough? When time is not enough, okay. Uh, yun talaga, eh. kailangan mo talaga ma-improve rin yung reading speed. Pero sometimes I'm guilty of this. Uh, I skip portions of the decision na alam ko naman hindi relevant. Like for example, nagbabasa nga ako for a, for a substantive law subject. Okay. Family law. Okay. Tapos yung case, ang haba-haba ng decision on procedural aspect. Pwede ko na-skip. Kasi hindi naman yun relevant doon sa subject. Okay. So when you do that, mas mabilis. Okay. Mas mabilis. And uh, yun, pwede nyo gawin ngayon tip na sinabi ko kanina, decision muna sa dulong part para pag bumalik kayo sa simula, alam nyo na kung ano yung relita. Thank you po, attorney. For the last and third question po, paano nyo po naaalala ang mga codal provisions pag nagre-recite or exam? Ah, codal provisions. Ako talaga hindi ako ano eh. Uh, I'm not... So I'm not the type of student who memorizes word for word yung mga codal provisions. But sometimes it's inevitable na kailangan may memorize ka talaga. So what I do, I I read it uh, for several times, for multiple times, hanggang magkaroon ako ng konting mastery. So hindi ko naman mini make sure to the point na talagang word for word na memorize ko siya. At least yung gist ng codal provisions. And when you are reading codal provisions, there are provisions that are more important than others. So, pwede niyong gawin to. Like, for example, you are reading the revised penal code okay, or the, the family code. Article 1. Very important article. Definition ng marriage. Lagyan niyo ng star. Okay? Para pag binalikan niyo yung codal provisions, ah, ito important article. So, ito nga. Babasahin ko ng paulit-ulit. Diba? Or kung ano man yung technique nyo sa pag-memorize. Because again, magkakaiba tayo ng learning style. Ako, mas effective sa akin na inuulit-ulit yung codal na para ma-memorize ko siya like I'm reciting a prayer. Yun yung effective sa akin. Uh, during the bar review, I also use the technique of... Um, you know, I, I used a bowl and then I placed their uh, cutouts of paper like uh, yung, yung section number. Okay, yung article number. And then every day, I pick one paper. Kung ano man mabubunot kong article, kailangan ma-recite ko. Okay? Kasi kay, alam ko na kailangan ko ma-memorize yung codal provisions na importante. Okay? So yun, pwede nyo rin yung gamitin. Okay. 
Okay, so depending on you. Kung kung mabilis kayo mag-memorize, then okay na siguro sa inyo na makita nyo lang okay na. Kung hindi naman, kung tulad kayo sa akin na hindi naman talaga magaling mag-memorize, I, I am more concerned on understanding what I read rather than memorizing word for word. Mas maganda yon. Mas maganda yon na maintindihan nyo. Kasi at least, hindi ko man ma-memorize word for word yung kudal profession. I can recite it to you. Okay? Using the words of the law itself, may konting modification, pero yung, yung substance ng provision andyan pa rin. Thank you po again, Atty. Azores. Um, may pahabol lang po kami two questions from some of our attendees. Um, mm -hmm. Isa po is, my question po for Atty. Azores ay, sa fax po ng case, is it okay po na i-copy-paste yung mismong fax or kailangan po itong i-paraphrase? And necessary po ba sa compilation ng digest ang title page or cover page? Thank you po. Okay. Yung second question, I think that's a question that is better addressed to your professor. Hindi ko naman alam. Baka sabihin ko sa hindi pwede. Tapos yung professor nyo pala gusto. As to the facts naman, it depends rin eh. Kung yung sa tingin nyo yung facts as presented by uh, the decision already contains all the relevant information and hindi naman siya ganun kahaba, pwede nyo nalang i-copy-paste. But if you think na masyado madaming sinabing Supreme Court, tapos ang gusto lang naman sabihin, diba? for example, the petitioner filed a case against uh, the respondents for, let's say, staffa. Okay. Kung ganun lang naman, diba, ang dami lang sinabi sa facts, okay, pwede nyo nang iano, if paraphrase or you can modify. Okay? Or you can even uh, create your own sentence as long as yung substance ng facts andun pa rin. Kasi okay, so tingnan nyo pa rin. Okay, tingnan nyo pa rin kung relevant ba, kung kailangan talaga ma-reproduce sa digest nyo. Okay, pero kung pwede nyo naman i-summarize, pwede nyo paikliin, then do it. Okay lang naman yan. Attorney, for, from our ano po, chat box here and Zoom, last question po. Do you have any advices daw po for legal management working students? I'm a working student na. Okay, sige. I I also yes, conducted I also conducted a separate webinar naman as uh, this is for Center for Global Practices. Ang subject doon is how to excel in law school as a working law student. So um, if I will if I were to summarize the tips that I gave to them, it really boils down on uh, priority management. Okay, I will not say time management because uh, some can argue na hindi mo naman talaga ma-manage yung time. Priority management because your work is demanding, your your uh, course is demanding, your legal management is demanding. But sometimes you you have to choose eh, kung ano yung dapat mong i-prioritize, okay? And sometimes kailangan mag even give in ng isa for the other. But when you prioritize your your uh, responsibilities as an employee and as a student. Just make sure na yung ba, iko compromise mo, may sasalo. Okay? Like, for example, sa, sa, sa trabaho, okay, I made sure that I created a good working rapport with my co-workers. Kasi alam ko, nakakailangan ko, kakailanganin ko ang tulong nila when it comes to midterms and final exams. So kapag nagtatrabaho ka, may iba kasi na isisekreto nila na ano sila, law student. Kasi pag ganun, sometimes may mga ingit factor. Pero kung sa tingin mo mabait naman yung mga office mates mo and magiging supportive naman, di ba? you can maintain good relationships with them para kapag kailangan mo mag-leave or kailangan mo mag-under time, you can tell them, uy, pwede ba tulungan mo ko sa ganito? Uh, and even yung boss mo, pwede, mo, pwede bang ano po, mag-under time ako, mag-leave ako kasi mag -mid terms ganyan. So, pwede mong gamitin yun. Okay? Kasi admittedly, mahirap talaga. Mahirap talagang uh, pagsabayin. Okay? And kailangan talaga mag, merong mag, may mag-give in sa dalawa at some point. Okay? Pero ang uh, pwedeng gawin nga yun, main, uh, maintain good working relationship with your co-workers and with your classmates as well. Kasi sometimes, yung law school naman yung kailangan mag-give in. Like for example, yung digest nga, may na-assign sa'yo, 20. Alam mo talaga na hanggang 15 lang talaga yung may na-digest mo. Pwede mo pakiusapan yung klaka-klase mo na full working for uh, full-time student na pwede bang ano, sa'yo muna to babawi ako kapag medyo maluwag na sa trabaho. So yung gano'n, di ba? Compromise. Okay? Compromise in order for it to work. Okay? 
And you also need to be more efficient in both uh, circumstances. Okay? Sa trabaho mo, hindi ka na pwedeng pakapikapin lang, pachismis-chismis lang. Diba? Make sure that you will finish all your work in the assigned time. Kasi hindi mo afford diba? na magkapikapin lang, makichismis sa office mates mo. So kung kaya mo tapusin as early as possible, ba? Ba? kaya mo nang tapusin ang half day yung trabaho mo, diba? at least yung half day, kung hindi ka nabigyan ng trabaho, Pwede ka na magbasa, di ba? Using your laptop, huwag ka lang magpapahalata, di ba? So yung uh, ganoon, kailangan mo lang rin talagang uh, maging creative on how you will uh, prioritize your demands in work and in law school or in your case, in your course as legal management students. Again, thank you so much to our speaker, Attorney May Diane Azores, for that very knowledgeable and helpful discussion and for skillfully answering all of our questions. And because of this, please allow us to award this certificate of recognition on behalf of LPU Lex and DLSSM in partnership with CAS and LPU Manila. But first, let me read the content of the certificate. The certificate of appreciation is given to Attorney May Diane Azores on this 26th day of March 2022 via Zoom in grateful acknowledgement of her invaluable contribution as the guest speaker during this event organized by LPU Lex entitled I rest my case, a Lex webinar on reading and digesting cases. Once again, thank you so much po, Thornia Zores. Thank and you so may, much. Thank you. Thank you. And may we request a photo of po together with yeah, the sure. participants. So sa mga participants who would like to open their cams para makasama po sa photo op, please open your cams. Thank you. Sino sino magbibilang guys? Napo pa ah, sige. Three, two, one. And I think that's it. But before we end this event, may we call on the very hardworking LPULEX advisor, none other than Professor Joseph Dongle, for his closing remarks. My dear students, my ever industrious and passionate officers, fellow professors, and to our esteemed guest speaker, Attorney Azores, it was indeed a very productive Saturday afternoon. We were able to take part in a very integral topic for legal management students, which is, of course, it's about developing our skills in reading and digesting cases. Thanks to our very proactive guest speaker, Attorney May Azores, for gracing us with her knowledge and presence, which I think was very helpful since reading and digesting cases were one of the challenges that legal management students face. I sincerely hope that the knowledge and skills that we garnered in this webinar event will be useful as you go along with your journey in the legal management curriculum and in the legal profession in the future. At this point, I would like to send my sincerest thanks and congratulations to my dear officers for your dedication and hard work and for making this event possible. Of course, with the help of our esteemed chairperson, Chris Jimenez, and with the technical assistance from Sir, Sir John Celario and his team. And of course, I would also like to thank our participants who spent an afternoon here with us. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Lastly, I would like to encourage everyone to always value justice and truthfulness, especially in this day and age where many people easily fall prey to disinformation and historical revisionism. Let us all be defenders of truth and always be a defender of justice. Let us put in our hearts and in mind na mas magaan sa puso at mas mapayapa sa isip kapag ang isang bagay na ating ipinaglalaban ay nakasandig sa ustisya at katarungan. So with that, I would like to thank you once again and, congr and, and congratulations to all. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day ahead. Thank you so much, Sir Joseph. 
And now, as one LPU community, let us sing all together LPU hymn. like to acknowledge LPU College of Arts and Sciences, LPU Manila's Communications and Public Affairs Department, and Information and Community Communication Technology Department as our event partners for today's webinar. Again, to all the students, professors, researchers, and other community members, we would like to express our profound gratitude for attending I Rest My Case, a Lex webinar on reading and digesting cases the fourth installment of Lex Pasinaya series. But before we officially end, we hope that you can take this time to answer the evaluation form to get your respective certificates, that which will be sent in the next few days. The link is now posted by our LPO Lex Vice President on the comment section because your feedback would help, would help us know if our event went well and on how we can improve our future events. We would love to hear it from you guys. Make sure to keep yourselves updated by liking and following our official Facebook page, LPU Lex, for our upcoming webinars and events. You may also reach us through our email, lpulex.manila at gmail.com. Also, to LPU Manila ABLM students, please proceed to our General Assembly after this event. And that's it. Once again, this has been your host, Leila Angelica Talao, your LPU Lex Assistant Secretary. And I am your co-host, Pia Alger A.K. Bot, your LPO Lex Director for Internal Affairs. And officially, this is the end of this year's I Rest My Case, a Lex webinar on reading and digesting cases. Thank you, everyone, and stay safe. Bye, guys.